overflows. Being here now is crystal purity. Mind moves either in the past memories or imagination of the future. The past is memories, future is imaginations. Between these two is a precise moment. That moment is the moment of here now. That moment is the moment of here now. And when you are available to this precise moment here now, there comes a crystal purity, purity of all kinds, purity of emotions, purity of thoughts, purity of understanding. Memory, living in the memory, does not give you crystal clarity, so too, when you are wandering in the meadows of imaginations, then too you do not get crystal clarity. And when there is crystal clarity, this is the purity of the being here, of being available to the moment. Beyond the memories and the imaginations of the future, you come to this very moment, you are available to this very moment, now, there comes a crystal clarity and this clarity is the purest form of existence. This is the fragrance of awareness. Crystal purity, this crystal purity is the light of awareness. Now you see things in reality, not as shadows. Now you interact and respond out of such crystal purity. So either when there is crystal clarity, this creates a situation of purity. Your emotions are not guided by any thoughts or imagination or shadows of the memory. Your emotions are pure. That is why this word crystal purity is used. Also there is no imaginations of any kind. So Purity, this crystal purity comes only in the precise moment of now. Then everything becomes divine, meditative, irrespective of what you are engaged in. Then there is no possibility of committing any sin or no act remains a sin. In that crystal clarity, the first thing that happens, ego disappears. And it is the ego. And egocentric identities it is the ego and egocentric identities that bring all kinds of problems in life. Whatsoever problems you had in life had been the outcome of ego, 
and egocentric identities. There is a subtle relationship between ego and egocentric identities. Ego is the samam banam, totality, and egocentric identities are of different nature. The ego is violent and if you try to become humble, you may become humble, but ego will remain there, hiding behind your humbleness. humbleness. Therefore, unless you become aware, ego will continue to play its game in different ways. You will claim that you are a very humble, you are a very honest person. This is also the game that ego is playing. The game will be changed. You may move from one prison to another, move from one prison cell to another prison cell, that is all. But there is no possibility to get rid of the prison cells. The only way to get rid of, get out of the prison is to be utterly alert and awake. In that alertness, you become crystallized. In that alertness, you become centered. So, both crystallization and centering is the outcome of alertness. In that very, and that very centering takes you into the very core of reality. That experience is so blissful, the experience of reality is so blissful that you cannot remain a thief anymore because all that you needed, all that you have ever desired is fulfilled now. All that you needed and all that you had ever desired is fulfilled. There are many things that you desire and you need it in life are being fulfilled as you grow into awareness. Two things happens with that. You are becoming crystallized and centered. As such, you do not know which is the center. In fact, you had never asked so much ever as is showering on you of this own accord. Many things are showering on you that you have never imagined, never asked. Who would like to be a thief and for what? Who would like to be, like to murder and for what? You cannot even imagine murdering because now you know nothing can be killed and all is eternal. It is a futile effort. You cannot kill anything. At the most you can take the garments away. Death is taking the garments away. But the inner being continues. Once you have seen, crystallization means, centering means, you have seen your own inner being. You have tasted your own innerness. In the light of awareness, you have seen not only your being, but that of others as well. And this is eternity. Then you realize death is false. Death happens only in dreams, not in truth. 
not in reality, but you say that the person has died. The being still exists, but you have no experience of your own being. How can you experience the being of the other? How can you engage in something which is not right when you are aware? Awareness brings tremendous love in its wake and a loving person cannot rape, cannot murder, cannot do anything. All these things are possible only when the person has never known anything of love. Love is the outcome of centering, of crystallization and centering. And remember, people who are rapists are not only the people who rape. You may be a good husband or a good wife, married legally, and everything and your relationship may be nothing but rape-like. If you are unaware, you cannot do anything else other than this. Your relationship will, that, will remain that of a rapist. You may be raping in a legal way, authorized, sanctioned by the society, but that does not matter. If your wife is making love to you because it is her duty to make love to the husband, whenever husband wants, it is not love, it is rape. So is the case with the man. She is not really in it. And when a person is not really into it, introspect how many times when you are engaged in the act of love making you are really into it if you are making love to your spouse and not being totally present in that moment what you will call this rape and in most of the cases we are not available to the moment introspect both are raping one another. Love is love only when it is meditative. Any act becomes meditative when it is performed out of love and understanding. Love is love only when there is a great awareness. Otherwise, without awareness, love is not love, you may call it. Love is love only when there is great awareness from both sides. Two nows meeting together, two hears meeting and merging into one another, two presences merging into one another, melting into each other, two breaths dissolving into one another, then it is love. And then it has a spiritual quality, a spiritual dimension to it. Let every aspect of your life has a spiritual quality, a spiritual dimension to it, whether you are eating, whether you are making love, walking or doing anything. Then love is love because it is a function of meditation enough for now.